Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll check on that. I don't think it's live right now. I'm not sure. Good afternoon, everyone. We're live in the CBS 42 Storm Team Weather Center in Birmingham, Alabama. With a close eye on Hurricane Laura. Um, let's see if everybody's checking in real quick. Uh, yep, yeah, okay, people are signing in, sounds good. So we just got the advisory package that came in at four o'clock for the storm. And right now it's got winds up to 80 miles per hour. Uh, it already looks really well, uh, well structured and it has ever since it's been back towards Hispaniola, you know, uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti, it was already looking like a pretty large storm. Uh, and we can already tell that it's, getting its act together, moving into these really warm, really warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to be watching it really closely. Uh, the pressure is dropping. It's down to 990 millibars now. The lower the pressure is, the stronger the storm is. And again, winds up to when the pressure drops, you have stronger winds that are forming. So 80 mile per hour winds already. Uh, this is not going to be like Marco, where it just kind of peters out. This is going to do the exact opposite, where if anything, it'll just keep on getting stronger before making landfall. Uh, so let's walk you through some of the latest forecast advisory stuff from the Hurricane Center. This is what we've got so far. Uh, looks like I'm clicking through the wrong graphic system. My bad. Sorry, Ashley. <laughs> I was clicking the links to button. So here's the forecast track. Um, <clears throat> latest track from the Hurricane Center has it reaching Category 3 strength uh, before making landfall there all right near the uh, Texas-Louisiana state line. That's the most likely spot for this thing to make landfall. It's consistently pushed farther to the west over the past couple of days, but this is the latest as of now. Uh, we'll wait to see if it pushes any farther to the west, but you can tell there that the cone of uncertainty has shrunk because we're getting closer and closer in time to this thing making landfall. So by that time, we could be looking at a Category 3 storm, if not anything stronger than that. I think, if anything, it has a chance of being, um, at the very least, a Category 3 storm by landfall. And you can see there those hurricane watches and hurricane warnings there on the map. The hurricane warnings extend as far west as Houston and Galveston and as far east as the Mississippi River. Uh, you see there on the map that the hurricane warnings are expand farther on the eastern side of the storm because that's where a lot of the storm surge is going to be uh, on that storm's eastern side because in the northern hemisphere, hurricanes spin counterclockwise. And with the winds coming out of the south, on the right hand side, that's where all the winds are kind of pushing all of that seawater ashore. That's where the storm surge is going to be higher. So the hurricane warnings farther east on the storm's eastern side. So uh, here are the storm surge watches and warnings. We got storm surge warnings that go from uh, again from Houston through southeast Texas over towards Port Arthur and Lake Charles, Jennings, Kaplan, all of Louisiana under essentially all of the southern coast of Louisiana included with that. Uh, storm surge warning. So that's pretty substantial. The storm surge watch goes over towards Lake Pontchartrain, so New Orleans, just under a storm surge watch. Uh, this will be a pretty big storm, the wind field of it, uh, so it'll expand pretty far to the east and even as far east as Gulfport, include with that storm surge watch. So we've got uh, a new storm surge product. We're able to ingest National Hurricane Center data into our graphic system so we can show with pretty high resolution what the storm surge forecast looks like. So everything that you see there in red, uh, that is nine or more feet of storm surge that's expected. That's really high. Uh, for anybody who's immediately along the coast, you wanna get the message out there that they really have to move inland away from the coastline because nine feet of storm surge is a lot. That's enough to submerge you know, the first story of any building that's right there along the coast. Uh, I know southern Louisiana isn't necessarily the most populated area, but if you do know of anybody, it's worth reaching out to them. That uh, definitely not a bad idea to move farther inland. Over towards Houston, the, uh, the gradient in the storm surge kind of drops off quickly, but still looking at around six to nine feet of surge possible. 
from everywhere that's east of Houston. You notice how west of Galveston Bay, uh, the storm surge doesn't look that high, you know, uh, towards Baytown and over towards Cove, Texas. Maybe not quite as uh, high storm surge expected there, but uh, certainly nothing, or certainly not nothing to, uh, to say the least. So if you know anybody in Houston, it's worth getting the message out that even though as of right now, they're gonna be on the western side of the storm, which will not be uh, as hard as as hard hit as uh, the eastern side, it's still, it's definitely, still definitely worth watching. And then farther to the east, over towards Lake Charles, I think the that Lake Charles is certainly looks to be right in the almost the bullseye of where the storm is really going to get hit, or the place that'll really get hit the hardest. I think uh, right on the Texas Louisiana state line is where um, appears to be you know kind of the bullseye for where the storm is uh, where the storm is headed. Farther east, still looking at nine feet of storm surge as far east as Abbeville, New Iberia, Franklin, Morgan City, Louisiana. Uh, this is going to be way more impactful than anything that Marco did. Uh, I know we, uh, leading up to this, we were talking about this being kind of a double whammy. Marco kind of petered out a lot before it actually made landfall, but um, I think, uh, I think uh, Laura will seriously outdo Marco for sure. Here's a look at the chances of tropical storm force winds. So this is anything that uh, is 39 miles per hour or greater. You notice how here in Alabama, if you're watching here at home in Birmingham, most of those winds will stay west of us. That's not really the concern for us. But, you know, as you move into Mississippi and Louisiana, those wind speeds will definitely increase with uh, that 90% chance or greater there, that bullseye, right in that state line between uh, Texas and Louisiana. Here's the probability of the hurricane force winds. Notice how this is much smaller because this hurricane winds cover a smaller area, but uh, towards Beaumont, um, over towards Lake Charles, that is where the highest risk for those hurricane force winds were are going to be. Now this is subject to change uh, as you know each mile makes a difference but um, this is the latest as of now from this 4 p.m. advisory. And part of the reason why I've been saying you know that this will be at the very least a category 3 storm is because of how warm these ocean temperatures are. Uh, anything traditionally above 80 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit excuse me usually is supportive of tropical development and right now the sea surface temperatures are 86 to 88 degrees. Uh, anything that warm is usually pretty conducive to rapid intensification. We've seen that uh, with Hurricane Harvey. We saw it rapidly intensify before landfall. We saw it with Hurricane Michael too a couple of years ago. The difference here between Harvey and this storm I think is that this will be moving much faster. Uh, for any of you who live through Harvey you know that uh, the biggest problem with Harvey was that it made landfall and then just stopped. Uh, I don't think that this is what that's going to do because it'll be moving pretty quickly and move inland uh, by Thursday afternoon. It's already almost up into Arkansas. Uh, so that's the big key difference there between Laura and, and uh, Harvey. So here are the main takeaways. I think Laura has a good chance of rapidly intensifying because of those ocean temperatures. Uh, it'll, it'll be at the very least a category three storm. So that's really significant. And over nine feet of surge is uh, really important to get the message out there that surge is the most uh, life-threatening thing from a storm like this. Uh, so you know anybody in South Louisiana, uh, in Houston, just tell them that you know it's not a bad idea to maybe move farther inland if they can help it uh, away from the coastline because that's pretty significant for sure. And meanwhile here in Alabama while this storm kind of curves out uh, through Arkansas and up through Tennessee, because we're on the right-hand side of the storm, we'll be watching for the possibility of maybe some tropical storm-generated tornadoes that may develop late Thursday, early Friday. As always, with any landfalling tropical cyclone, that's a possibility, so we'll be watching for that. Um, as of right now, you know, you saw how those tropical storm force winds will kind of stay to our southwest, but we'll be keeping an eye on that as the forecast develops. So that is the latest as of now. Uh, I'll try to go through the comment section and answer any questions that you guys might have. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, tell, tell us where you're watching from. And uh, other than that, uh, yep, Laura should be a really powerful storm, certainly a lot more powerful than anything Marco did. And that's all I've really got for now. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and uh, take care.